welcome to the second lecture of the module 2 of this course on accelerator physics so today we learn about rf acceleration uh, before that let me just uh, revise whatever we did in the first lecture so in the first lecture we learned about the limitations of uh, dc accelerators so we saw that the voltage generated in a dc accelerator can be used only once and at the most twice uh, as in the case of tandem accelerator so we cannot use this uh, voltage generated many times also the uh, energy gain is limited by how high a voltage you can achieve so that is why you cannot go to very high energies using dc accelerators we also saw that we use electron volts as energy units because the masses of the charged particles involved are very small so even though the velocity is high, their kinetic energies are very small as compared to the quantities that we use in our daily life. So joule is too large a unit to represent the energy of uh, these beam and hence we use electron volts. And uh, also the particles, they have energies comparable to the rest uh, to their rest mass energy. So that is why Newtonian mechanics does not apply. We have to use relativistic mechanics. So we saw that the light particles like electrons, they become relativistic at lower values of kinetic energy because their mass is quite low. Once the velocity reaches close to the velocity of light, the velocity becomes almost constant and then as the kinetic energy increases, the velocity doesn't increase much. It is the mass that increases. We also saw that for um, that magnetic fields cannot increase the energy of the charged particles. Only electric fields can be used to increase the energy of the charged particles. Magnetic fields are however used for focusing and deflection of the beams. The electric fields can be used for both acceleration as well as focusing and deflection. We also saw that at high velocity, the magnetic fields, they are more efficient than uh, electric fields for focusing of the beam. So with this, let's start today's lecture. <clears throat> so today we'll study how we can accelerate using time varying fields. The simplest time varying field is a sinusoidal type of variation. Okay, so here is the electric field which is varying sinusoidally with time. The form of the electric field can be written as E Z T. Z means it is in the Z direction and it's a function of Z and T can be written as E0 cos omega Tz plus phi. This is the most uh, general form. Here omega is the angular frequency and it can be expressed in terms of the frequency of this wave as omega is equal to 2 pi f. The time period of this wave is equal to 1 by f. And uh, we note here that the frequency is in the range of RF frequency, the radio frequency. Hence it's called RF accelerator. So it's in the range of tens of megahertz to a few gigahertz. Now notice that the beam here will be coming continuously with time. Okay, the beam is a continuous beam. It is going to be coming continuously with time. Okay, so let's say there is a gap here. In this, this time varying electric field is applied. The beam is coming here continuously. So as the beam enters into this gap here, it sees this part of the electric field first. So this is in the forward direction, so the beam gets accelerated. Okay, now after some time, the, when the uh, later part of the beam comes in here at, uh, let's say this time, the field has changed in sign. It is now in the negative. So this part of the beam will be decelerated. So only the positive cycle will accelerate, the negative cycle will decelerate the beam. <clears throat> so hence we can say that only positive cycle can be used for acceleration, the negative cycle will produce deceleration. So in order to accelerate without any loss of beam, the beam needs to be bunched. Okay, so let's say this is the beam, this is the DC beam that's coming continuously, this is the uh, RF field. So now you have to bunch the beam, you have to bunch the beam such that it sees only the positive part of the RF field. It does not see the negative part, okay? And you need to bunch it at the same frequency as that of the applied RF field. 
it has to be at the same frequency okay? so the bunch frequency should be same as the frequency of the applied rf also the bunch beam needs to be synchronized with the time varying electric field such that it always sees a positive field okay so you have bunched the beam but let's say you inject it into the gap when the field is negative in that case it will get decelerated so you have to you have to synchronize it with the time varying electric field such that it always sees a positive value of the electric field so that is how you can accelerate using time varying fields <coughs> So here, let's say we have a series of uh, hollow conducting tubes. Okay, so this these are hollow, hollow so that the beam can pass through it, and it is uh, a conductor. So, uh, being a conductor, the, the the field electric field will not enter inside the uh, uh, these tubes. These tubes are known as drift tubes. Okay, let's say we apply a RF uh, voltage here. we apply an rf voltage here such that at a particular instant of time okay let's say at t is equal to 0 this is positive and this is negative in this case the first drift tube becomes positive the third drift tube is positive and the last drift tube is positive the second and fourth drift tubes will be negative so if you if i draw the electric field here it is in the forward direction here it is in the reverse direction here again in the forward direction here reverse direction here and so on so if i inject the beam bunch in this gap it will be accelerated so it will be it will be accelerated in this gap now when it comes to the next gap here the field is in the opposite direction so here it will get decelerated but what i can do is that let it come from the first gap to the second gap in time t by 2 so after time t by 2 what happens the field changes polarity okay now let's say this reaches here at time it reaches in the second gap at time t by 2 so at time t by 2 what happens is that the field changes sign so now this becomes negative and this becomes positive so the first drift tube the third drift tube and the last drift tube is now negative the second and fourth drift tubes are positive so in this case now the field in the second gap has now become in the forward direction and hence it will accelerate so in this way by uh, changing the polarity the same voltage can be used repeatedly to accelerate to high energies provided the particle arrives at each gap at the right time or in the right way such that it sees always the positive part of the electric field so it has to travel from here to here in time t by 2 so in order to use time varying fields for acceleration the beam must be bunched and it must be synchronized with the field <coughs> so the same small voltage can be used repeatedly to accelerate to high energies by successively accelerating the charged particles over many gaps so the necessary condition here is isochronism that is the particle arrives at each gap at the right time or in the right uh, so that it sees the right phase of the electric field that is the positive part of the electric field also as we have studied already in the uh, first lecture for acceleration there should be a component of electric field in the direction of velocity of the beam now without isochronism we can still get acceleration in the gaps however for sustained acceleration over large lengths of many tens of accelerating gaps isochronism is important so this is known as principle of successive acceleration acceleration now here since the field is varying in time so unlike in the dc field where this quantity was equal to 0 so here this is no longer zero because field is varying in time so the field is not conservative so this removes the restriction that energy gain is limited by the fixed potential difference you can use the same field several times for acceleration okay so let's say the energy gain in one gap is delta w if you have n number of gaps then the total energy gain is now n into delta w so you can go to as high uh, energy as you want by increasing the number of gaps so now there is no limit on the maximum energy of the charged particles unlike the dc accelerators so you use only a small voltage but you use it several times to go to higher energies 
Okay, so for uh, synchronous acceleration, as we have seen, time taken by the bunch to travel from one gap to the next, so for traveling from uh, here to here, this is equal to t by 2. Only then the field changes sign and the, uh, it will experience acceleration in this gap as well. So we define cell length as the distance between the centers of two adjacent gaps. So cell length for synchronization, the for cell length should be equal to L is equal to V into T by 2. So if the charge particle here is, it is moving from here to here in with velocity V, average velocity V, then it moves from here to here in time T by 2. So L will be equal to V into T by 2. So V can be written as beta C and T can be written as 1 by F. Okay, so this now C by F can be written as lambda. So cell length is equal to beta lambda by 2. Now at a particular instant of time, if I take a snapshot, I see that the field in the first gap is in the forward direction. In the second gap, it is in the reverse direction. So the field in adjacent gaps, they are out of phase with each other. So this is known as a pi mode structure. Now at a particular instant of time, okay, since the field here is accelerating and here it is decelerating, again accelerating here, I can have a bunch here and then there will be no beam bunch here because if there is a bunch here, this will get decelerated. So there won't be any beam bunch here. The next bunch will be in the next gap. So if I calculate the distance between the bunches, it will come out to be 2 times L, 2 times L. So that is equal to beta lambda. So distance between the bunches in this case is equal to beta lambda. Now synchronous acceleration is also possible if the time taken by the bunch to travel from one gap to the next is T or one full RF cycle, uh, full RF cycle period. So in this case now the cell length again defined as center to center distance. So cell length is now v into t because now time taken to travel this distance is t. So L is equal to v can be written as beta c and t can be written as 1 by f. So L becomes now beta lambda. Also in this case now if you notice the fields in the adjacent gaps they are all in the same direction. Okay. So this type of structure is known as a zero mode structure. So now because the field is in the same direction in all the gaps, I can have a bunch in at a particular instant of time, I can have a bunch in all the gaps. So if I calculate the distance between the bunches, it is simply equal to the cell length and that is equal to beta lambda. <clears throat> so now I can summarize the difference between the zero mode structure and the pi mode structure. In the case of zero mode structure, the time taken to travel from one gap to the next is capital T whereas here it is T by 2. The cell length here for the zero mode structure comes out to be beta lambda for synchronous acceleration and here for synchronous acceleration it is beta lambda by 2. If I see the fields, field direction in adjacent gap here at a particular instant of time here it is in the same direction and here it is in the opposite direction. However, the distance between the bunches is always the same. It is whether it is the pi mode structure or the zero mode structure. The distance between the bunches is beta lambda in both the cases. <clears throat> so let's see now how acceleration is done. Ez changes sign every t by 2. So we see here that the electric field changes sign after every time. Okay, and even within this uh, time period t by 2, the field is not constant, it is varying with time. So now what happens, let's say we have a bunch, we have a full bunch from 0 to t by 2. Okay, now what happens, the bunch, uh, the, the particles in the bunch that see this part of the field and this part of the field, that means at t is equal to 0 and t is equal to t by 2. The field here is 0. So they do not get any acceleration. Whereas the particle in the bunch that sees this part of the field that experiences maximum acceleration. So different particles in the bunch will get different uh, acceleration. So we cannot use the 
<clears throat> entire uh, we cannot use the entire positive part for acceleration because then what will happen is that some particles will see higher field some particles will see zero field so there will be a huge spread in the kinetic energy so we use only a small portion of the rf cycle for acceleration such that there is not a huge spread in the kinetic energy so the bunch size is usually kept much smaller such that all particles in the bunch see only a small variation in the accelerating field now since the electric field is varying with time the energy gain in the accelerating gap depends upon the phase of the accelerating field seen by the particles okay because for this phase this phase the accelerating field is this this phase the accelerating field is this so what is your energy gain that depends upon what is the phase of that is seen by the particle in the center of the gap so we define a reference particle in the beam bunch which is called the synchronous particle so we there is one particle in the bunch a reference particle which we call the synchronous particle for which the linac has been designed okay so it sees the correct phase it gets the right energy gain so it when it arrives at the center of a gap it sees it sees the right uh, right phase of the electric field gets the right see, so sees the right electric field gets the right energy gain and it comes to the center of the next gap at the right time to see again the same value of the electric field and phase okay so this particle is known as the synchronous particle this and it is for the synchronous particle that the uh, linac has been designed now by convention by convention in a linear accelerator okay so it's different for a circular accelerator for a linear accelerator the crest of the sinusoidal variation of the rf field is taken as zero so we take the zero at this point so this is pi by 2 and this is minus pi by 2 this is a convention which is used in linear so now let's see can we use the entire positive cycle for acceleration so we know that the positive cycle in the positive cycle the field is in the accelerating phase but can we use the entire positive cycle for acceleration so let's just uh, see so now let's consider the phase of the synchronous particle as phi s okay so this green particle is the synchronous particle here okay and it has a phase phi s and let's consider a case where this synchronous particle is lying between minus pi by 2 and 0 now the beam bunch will have uh, other particles also beside the synchronous particle so let's say we have a particle which is this particle which is the early particle so this is the early particle because it came at a time so this you can see that this is the time scale so this came at a time earlier than the synchronous particle so this is known as the early particle and then there is another particle which is the late particle because it came at a time which is later than the synchronous particle okay. so now what happens the synchronous particle is the ideal particle the particle for which the linac has been designed so it comes to the center of the gap sees the right field okay gets the right energy gain and reaches the next gap at the correct time to see the same value of the phase again so it's the uh, it's the ideal particle it's the particle for which the linac has been designed now what about the early particle the early particle came earlier than the synchronous particle it saw a field lower than the slightly lower than the synchronous particle so now it has lower energy gain so it will move lower it is lower and in the next cycle it will reach later than the synchronous particle the late particle here now on the other hand it sees a field that is higher than the synchronous particle so it will move faster than the synchronous particle since it moves faster than the synchronous particle it will reach earlier in the next phase so we see that the particles around the synchronous particle in going from gap to gap they simply keep oscillating about the synchronous particle and the beam bunch is maintained so now when they move from this gap to here the synchronous particle will arrange again come in time the uh, this has now this is now the late particle it will come early 
and this particle which is now the early particle will come late so we see that the particles are simply oscillating around the synchronous particle so the beam bunch is always maintained okay now let's see what happens if we choose the synchronous phase lying between 0 and pi by 2 so that means in this region so this green particle is again my synchronous particle the particle for which the lenac has been designed and again i have an early particle this orange particle is the early particle because it has come at a time earlier than the synchronous particle the gray particle is the late particle because it has come at a time later than the synchronous particle now here the early particle it sees a field that is higher than the synchronous particle so what happens it gains more energy it moves faster and in the next cycle it reaches even early it reaches even early whereas the late particle sees a field lower than the synchronous particle and it gets a lower energy gain so it moves with a lower velocity and it reaches evenly so over several cycles this bunch will spread and eventually the particles will get lost so in other words we say that there is no phase stability so the early if you choose the synchronous phase between 0 to pi by 2 there is acceleration but there is no phase stability so in order to have acceleration with phase stability the synchronous phase must be chosen to lie between minus pi by 2 to 0 only then we can have sustained acceleration over large number of gaps okay so the first linear accelerator using uh, time varying fields it was conceived by icing and Bidrow. so they took an evacuated glass cylinder and they put these drift tubes inside and then there was this voltage genera generator here and uh, they were, this was connected to these drift tubes and uh, as the as the field change sign after every t, uh, time t by 2 this uh, the beam got accelerated so the beam bunch in traveling from here to here it took time t by 2 and so the synchronicity condition was l is equal to beta lambda by 2 Okay, so here we use hollow drift tubes to shield the beam bunch from the undesirable part of the RF field. So we want the beam to see only this part of the RF field. So the remaining part of the field is shielded by the drift tubes. For the remaining part, the bunch enters inside the drift tube and it, since electric field cannot enter inside a hollow conductor, so the uh, it is shielded from the uh, electric field once it enters inside the drift.